Hakim Baba Ahmed, Director of Publicity and Advocacy of the Northern Elders Forum, joins us right now. And also Mr. Kat Ononuju, who is an economist. Gentlemen, welcome to Sunrise Elite this morning. Well, thank you. Good morning. I, I'm sure that Nigerians definitely can see you right now, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm sure they're very interested in what you have to say. Um, in the dailies this morning, it's a lot about what the Northern Elders Forum had to say about the meeting which the Southern Governors held in Lagos uh, two days ago. Interestingly, this is the second time they're meeting this year, and it will, it will seem it happened in quick succession. Uh, well, at least from what we can see, if we're to go by previous years. Uh, and the response also seems to have been very swift. Uh, from what we read in the papers, uh, Northern leaders have been saying that rotational presidency, which is the most important thing, it would seem, that they have taken away from that. I don't know, but that's, it would seem, has been the loudest reaction uh, we have heard. That rotational presidency is unconstitutional. It doesn't mean it is illegal, does it? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, uh, it's, it's a political um, uh, process that politicians can adopt if they think that is the best. Um, but it's not in the Constitution. I think that is what it means. So it is not legally binding on any party or any um, uh, group uh, or any part of the country. Uh, so to that degree, uh, it is unconstitutional. However, it is not illegal, it is not wrong. What is the problem is the manner in which it is being pursued this time by uh, people who were elected um, on the basis of the constitution, who understand what politics is all about, who understand that politics is about getting up, doing the hard work of convincing people that there is an option that is better than others. Um, and reaching out to the rest of the country rather than sitting there and saying um, we want this and we want that. That's wrong. Um, uh, governors, governors are... What's are, wrong about it? Well, what is wrong about it is, first of all, that it is being done by the wrong people. Uh, governors know how politics takes place. Um, two, they, are, they must know that uh, in the manner they are doing this, not what they are looking for, but the manner in which they are doing it, it's likely to cause more problems to them than, uh, than, than solve the problem. First of all, um, you read between the lines, it's very um, well-crafted uh, communique that says uh, they want basically a southern presidency. There's nothing wrong with that. That means the north needs to yield the presidency to the southern part of the country. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problematic is to, to, uh, to get the North to say, okay, um, uh, show us why it's better. Show us why a northern, a southern presidency um, is the best for the North and for the rest of Nigeria. This is a democratic country. Citizens vote. Um, Nigerians, irrespective of where they are, have a right to vote for the candidate they want. Political parties have to do the hard work, the lifting. First of all, fielding southern candidates, and then convincing Nigerians from all parts of the country to vote for candidates that come from a particular region. That is what makes this issue particularly um, sensitive. So if you want a southern presidency, the first thing you do is to make sure that you work within your political party to make sure that a southern candidate emerges. Then you have to go to the rest of Nigeria and say, vote for this man um, uh, because he's from the south. Now, other people would say, no, no, I would vote for him if he convinced me that he is actually the best for Nigeria. It's been a rather thorny issue, this okay. issue of rotational presidency, so much so that the leading party, the very first party which formed government in 1999, the PDP, put it in its own party constitution mm -hmm. uh, that there will be a rotational presidency. Mm -hmm. And somehow, even though it is not in Nigeria's constitution, mm -hmm. um, it has been, maybe because they were the very first one to come in, immediately we started democracy, it somehow became a gentleman's agreement. Uh, so much so that it has even caused problems um, when even the constitution said, you have to hand over in, in the case that the president is not well, um, or in the case that the president is indisposed or 
you know, there were a there was a constitutional crisis that the constitution was not able to be obeyed, and it was seen that somehow this is issue of um, rotational presidency has dogged our politics. When we look at how it has affected our politics and how it is now also affecting issues of divisions in the country, uh, don't you think that a gentleman's agreement or even putting it, because we're in the process of a constitutional amendment right now, some people have said, let's put it in the constitution. What are your thoughts around that? Before I go to Mr. Ononucho. Um, if, if, we, if, we, if it is that uh, um, significant um, that Nigerians must uh, live under presidencies that are determined by uh, ethnicity, region, uh, and not on the basis of competence and acceptability, um, certainly um, Nigerians can look out of it, out, out, uh, at it decide whether it is something that should be in the constitution. Let me just remind you, unfortunately, the party that spearheaded this rotational presidency subverted this thing on so many occasions themselves, the PDP. In the run-up to 2014, 2015 elections, PDP lost a lot of ground over arguments over, on arguments over whether uh, the presidency, uh, President Jonathan can run or not uh, on the basis of an agreement. They've torn it to shreds politicians. And now we have a situation where people are saying, bring this presidency here in a manner that gets the other side of the country to dig in and say, no, listen, we have a right to vote for any candidate we want. If a political party feels a northerner, um, you cannot tell us not to vote for him. You cannot tell all parties to fill southern candidates because governors sit for four or five hours in four, five hours meeting and then say, bring the presidency here. You are creating an ethnic president, a regional president. And other Nigerians have a right to say, we want to see what is the value in this rotational presidency for us. Mm. Mr. Nonuju, do you see any value in it? Do you think, do you agree with him that um, this is really, I don't want to, you didn't say it was a non-issue, but so far so good, it would seem that what you're no, saying. I didn't. I didn't. It is a big issue, but it's, it's the way we're going about it. That is the, the way problem. that, do you think it was important for the Southern governors to have said this? Um, yes, yes. So far in country now, right now, the Southern governors seem to be the only opposition we have. The people actually reacting to the misgovernance of the Buhari administration. Uh, if you see, there were quite a lot of things in that. Nigeria runs a representative democracy. That's why Buhari's employment of nepotism removed representation from a lot of people. And that's why you saw these reactions. The reasons for this, Buhari has now sown a lot of things in such a way that they become so ethnically skewed that he has divided the country. The governors believe that the only way to reset the country and bring it to an inclusive strategy is to have the presidency zoned to the South. Don't forget, the PDP in 2014-2015, the Northern governors met, made the same statement that all parties should zone their presidency to the North. The current frontline protagonist in the PDP today, all of them obeyed the Northern governors' instructions, walked and made sure President Buhari became president. Their same protagonists are the same ones who now are in the PDP, screaming that the presidency should come to the note. And if you look at the way it is, our current crisis in country right now is the Fulani irredentism resurgence. And we believe that President Buhari has failed to be able to address this. By his use of nepotism, he has created monsters like Sondi Buhu, like uh, uh, Nandekano, and this seems to be undermining stability in the South and other places. Southerners are not happy to see their young people get so angry as to start requesting secession and separation from Nigeria. No, 
It is interesting that you say that the uh, southern governors are now the only opposition. Yes, uh, because so far so, in northern Nigeria, let me help you, let me finish. No, no, let me, finish, the note, let me finish my question, yes. Mr. Ononojo, because the, the, the questions will be opposition against who? Against I mean, misrule. Uh, against, if you say against the They person, are the only one raising their voice against the sustained ethnic cleansings, the, danger, the sustained may, militia may, actions may, by if, the Fulani bandits if I may, and Mr. Abuhari have done nothing about it. Mr. Nonoju, if I may finish my question, um, you have said that they have constituted themselves into an opposition. The question will be, is it against the president? No. Is it against the north? No. Because then... There is no, no, no. Because it true. will seem... Let me land. The north is actually if in may, agreement. Mr. Nonoju, you would let me finish my question. Yes. Because it would seem that the reaction that we're getting right now is from the northern elders. No. Who, or the, north, the northerners. I mean, uh, let me finish. From northern groups. And I think I need to be very categorical about this because um, even though, the, yes, they are groups, some people will say that there will be other voices in the north. The question is, which north are we talking about? In the north, when, when we talk about the north, who, who, which north are we specifically speaking to? Because we know that, is it the northern regions in terms of north central, northeast, northwest, or is it just a certain part of the north? I, I think I'll I have to put that question to you much later. But isn't there a danger? When we say the southern governors have constituted themselves into an opposition, there'll be huge questions as to, you know, opposition against who? Because at the end of the day, this does have the potential to further deepen divisions. You don't think so? There's nothing wrong with divisions deepened if lines are drawn. Now, in the note... There's nothing most, wrong with it. No, 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 that's it. Divisions are beautiful in politics. That's why you have uh, the side and that side. In the note, importantly, four or five days ago, former governor of uh, Borono Shetiba, Ekanuri, said the presidency should go to the south. The TV governor, Governor Samuel Tom, said the presidency should go to the north. These are very important ethnicities. It is only the Fulani that refuse the presidency to go to the south. Do you, me. Do you consider... Governor, I'm repeating it now. Let me land. It is not the it, north. No, let me land. Good. Do you consider Governor El Rufai a Fulani governor? Yes. He has also said the presidency should go to the south. That is also what I'm saying. But then, that is what he says. But you see, some Fulani leaders, that's why you see, among the Fulani elite, not all of them agree. Some say, let us, for the sake of the country, allow inclusive Nigerian political experiment. Some of them, who I refer to as the Fulani Redentist Movement, refuse. The problem is, some of those people, members of the Redentist Movement, refuse to share Nigeria with the rest of us. That is at the heart of this thing. And because Buhari has pandered to the agenda of the Miyeti Allah, that's why those governors said, no, they have complained. President, you are not doing anything about the killings by the Fulani militia and the Fulani bandit people the media Allah supports them, and you keep quiet. The Southerners are the only ones raising voice because some people in the North fear if they raise their voice, people could come after them. And politely, look at the, just look at every single resolution in that Lagos declaration. All of them were intelligent targets to actually stop the things that we see that are wrong about the country. If President Buhari has been able to get governors in the North to become docile, out of fear. Well, he has simply seen that the governors in the South have not been able to get that intimidated. Very simply, this is our country. We elected those governors, we cried to them, and they know what we're saying. Look at the resolution where they said, nobody should come to any state to start a security operation without telling the governor. Why? We are now seeing a return of false flag operations across the South by fifth columnists working for the federal government. So the governor said, before you bring these things and you say it is a security maneuver, report to the governor. Report to the governor. Don't come here and do, you know, false flag operations. We would not fall for that. President Buhari is asleep at the wheels. So since there is nobody there, the only people who detect policy are the elites who seems to have the control of those machineries of government that we had ever allowed them to. What do you expect? Our governors to keep quiet? Our people will be killed? Our mothers cannot go to their farms? Our people cannot actually travel on the roads? The Okene, 
Ouchy Road. You can't pass through it. The Lagos Ibadan Express Road, you can't pass through it. If the villagers try to arrest and apprehend these Fulani bandits, presidency will make instructions from the top that they should go away. Look at Oweri. Three hours, 20 minutes of operation. And there was a stand down instructed. That was why the police and the army did not do that. We don't want such things. So if the president cannot protect us, we don't trust him anymore. We run to our governors. And so far, the governors are speaking. If he sees it as opposition, that is democracy. The beauty about democracy is all of us do not have to agree on the one thing. Since Buhari has abandoned Nigeria, Nature abhors vacuum, and that's why the governors are there doing exactly what the people want them to do. If you check right now, mm -hmm. there's a lot of rise in approval ratings for how those governors are handling their things. So, you, don't, you don't think that they are pandering to, to the people because elections are around them? No, no, no. They are rather afraid of the people. You know why? If they don't act, the people will resort to self-help. If they resort to self-help, you can see it. The creation of Sunday Buhu was simply because Anandekan was because Buhari refused to protect them. And all that time, we did not see the Fulani elite raise their voice. Today, in the note, the TV won't know, they know very well only a certain president can stop this slow moving civil war. Mm. Let me ask uh, Mr. Baba Ahmed now. I, I don't know. First and foremost, I'd like to know when you, when the, when you speak for not an elders forum. Um, do you have the majority of the voices of the North? And then which North will be the key question? The whole North. We speak for the North. We speak for uh, all Northerners. When you say the it's whole North, who is the whole North? Every Northerner. All we speak for the communities in the 19 Northern states. Northern Elders Forum, a organization I speak for, is made up of Niger Northerners from all parts of the North all parts of the North. And when we speak, we don't speak for Fulani or we don't speak for anybody. Including the North um, Central? Yes, absolutely. Our previous uh, convener is, uh, is, is a chief man from Benue State. Uh, look, <laughs> the, the issue, I, I'm, 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 I'm just shocked, to be honest. I thought at this stage, uh, at this level, we wouldn't be talking about Fulani, uh, um, not uh, raising their voices. Northern Elders Forum has raised its voice longer than anybody and higher than anybody against um, a lot of the shortcomings of the Buhari administration. We are not uh, uh, lackeys of uh, this administration. And uh, sometimes, somehow I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable about being made to look as if we're apologizing for President Buhari. But President Buhari's administration has failed the North, has failed Nigeria in so many areas. Um, and we've, we've, we've criticized him. We've raised our voices and we'll continue to raise our voices. What is wrong is to create the impression that uh, governors who have been in the southern part of the country, who have been opportunistic, and uh, cre creating uh, the impression that they, they are now um, leading uh, an opposition. Uh, my brother here says uh, they are the only opposition in this country. That is false. <laughs> They are not the only opposition in this country. There's a lot of people who are opposed to a lot of the things that are going on in this country. And they are saying so. There's nothing, all this talk about Fulani irredentis, all this talk about Buhari and his Fulani, it just sounds like fiction to me. I am, I'm from the North. In many ways, I'm Fulani. And when I hear educated, uh, supposedly informed people talk about, oh, there's a Fulani agenda, it's irredentism, all these things. I am, to be honest, I, I feel, I feel uh, very uncomfortable. The, f the governors, southern governors, are well informed. They know what's going on. What they want is a shortcut to a southern presidency. And we say, listen, the North is not opposed to having a southern presidency. And I don't see how that has to do where the, the quest for southern presidency has to do with a lot of the security issues. We, so you have to ask the question. Do we want a southern presidency now so that the North will be further isolated? This is the wrong way to sell a good product. This is not the way to go about it. If you say Buhari, President Buhari has been nepotistic, President Buhari has created security problems, so give us a southern presidency and give it to us at all costs. We ask the question, so what happens to the North? Are we going to have a southern president who now runs the country as if the North doesn't exist? Do you want the northern voter to actually vote for a southern president? Only on the ground that one or two people from the south says, your person has mismanaged Nigeria, and therefore it's our turn to mismanage Nigeria? 
Mm. Shouldn't, so, shouldn't we worry, for instance, when you hear talk like this, that perhaps this whole thing about the Southern presidency is to further create problems for the North? Mm. And don't we have a right, for instance? Do you to, agree, uh, before you go ahead, do you agree that so far the manner in which the president has run the country has made the South feel isolated? Because he's made reference to Everybody the creation. Everybody is isolated under President Buhari's administration. He has run. Yes. He has run. Perhaps, but some people more than others. And for some people, I mean, we have seen secessionist movements even where there was none before. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, look at the uh, the, the the start of start of Sunday Boho's movement mm -hmm. for a Yoruba nation, for instance. Yes, mm -hmm. one could argue that you know secessionist tendencies uh, and movements have always been there. Not under Namdekano. I mean, we've seen Masob before. Before, there was mm -hmm. Masab before Nam mm -hmm. So those ones ha have always been there. However, on the fringes they were. Mm -hmm. But right now we're seeing that they have taken center stage uh, in the southeast. Uh, proof is, is the sit at home that was ordered at the Biafra Remembrance, sure. which yeah. before now used to be ignored, but it was seen that largely in many parts of the southeast it was, it was, um, it was followed. And then when you look at what is happening in the southwest, uh, which a number of people are still shocked at, uh, we, we can see what is happening there. The rallies that have happened in the southwest have, have made some people ask, what exactly is going on in the center? So these are the areas where uh, the differences, it would seem, uh, are more pronounced. So would you agree that as a result of what we're seeing, this movement threatening the unity of Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, if we were to remain one, do you think that these sort of conversations are extremely important? They are. They are, but they should be founded on, on facts. They should be founded on, 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 a, on an understanding that we're still running a democratic system. The failures of the central administration, the federal administration, to deal with security issues, to deal with inclusiveness, to de manage our diversity better, um, is certainly a problem. It's also a problem for the North, to the degree that everybody tends to blame every Northerner, wherever he is, for Buhari's, uh, President Buhari's failings. We have suffered um, longer and, and more deeply than anybody else under this administration, we are more insecure, we are, more, more, we are poorer, we are more unsure about the future. Our young uh, can't even go to school. People tend to ignore this. And look, if the only option now for the North to get some, some reprieve uh, after 2023 is that it is, it is going to be uh, stampeded into um, uh, caging its own rights, Northern voters cannot vote, for, uh, uh, must vote for a Southern candidate to atone for what President Buhari has done, that's going to be a very difficult pill to swallow. And they need to know this. We are running a democratic government. And what you're doing is that you're talking about resistance from the Southeast, and I go, oh, you're stuck, um, um, and uh, Kanu. What about the Northern voter? What if the Northern voter decides to resist what appears to be uh, in intimidation and blackmail and says no? I have a right given to me by the Constitution to vote for the candidate I want. And I will vote for a candidate that I want. If you want to settle issues about security and the failures of the president, fine. But when it comes to 2023, if you want me to vote for a Southern candidate, please come and convince me how that Southern candidate meets my requirement as a leader. But if you do this, you scare me even more. We're already on the ground. We're not afraid to fall down. Mm -hmm. The point is that the way the campaign is going for Southern presidency, I don't want this issue to be diverted by all this talk about uh, irredentism and all these things. There's no full idea. They're real fears. Yeah. They, I mean, and they cannot be dismissed, especially when you look at you know, what the president has. Even the president had to admit at some point that indeed we've had foreigners invade the country mm -hmm. um, in the name of cattle rearing. We've heard um, Governor El Rufai um, you know, talk about how he tried to settle crisis in his state once and he found out that the people who were causing the crisis were not from the state, were not even from the country and he had to go and settle, do some settlement outside of the country. So these fears, especially when they begin to get down south, as far as they're concerned, they rarely differentiate between how people look. This is how they see it. So. If, this, if the misunderstanding has now been um, deepened in terms of how the, the leadership has handled the crisis, don't you think that uh, there, ha there needs to be, I, I don't want to say deeper conversations, but there needs to be an understanding, uh, things that will first of all bring us together before we can talk about who can be the leader? Absolutely. Look, let me remind you, 17 governors from the South are members of the 
uh, about four or five national bodies. They can go there, they go there, they can raise issues about security, they can raise issues about inclusiveness, they can raise issues about the economy. They're members of Council of State. They're members of so many. They have access to the president. They have access to virtually all decision-making bodies. They have access to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. But when you don't do the, 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 the work the way you're supposed to do it, and you then jump and hide behind fear and, and, uh, and insecurity, and then you start throwing demands, that is not responsible. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what we're witnessing is a drastic a failure of leadership at all levels in this country. The gov southern governors must know, and they know, I'm sure they know, this is not the way to go about solving problems. Mm -hmm. And so you don't hide behind insecurity and start making political demands. And how does a southern presidency, without dealing with the fundamentals about insecurity, the, the hardest, uh, the, you said there are foreigners that come into this country, go back to the ECOWAS, fix, fix the ECOWAS protocol that allows movement of people into this country. Fix it. It should have been fixed last year or the year before. It, does, it hasn't been. And the governors know where the problem is. It will only be fixed if, if only the leadership sees it as a problem. Yes. I'm not defending the leadership. The point I'm making is that the governors know more than most others that there is something called an ECOWAS protocol. If it makes Nigeria vulnerable, operate at the level where it can be fixed. And it should have been fixed. Mm. Uh, open grazing is not an issue for the North. We have made the case that we believe that open grazing should come to an end. However, it requires a national resolution and a national effort to solve it. It's not, it's not a northern problem. It's not a full any problem. Mm. Do you disagree with him on, on any of the issues that he's raised? Because he's already said the north is, is down. The north also feels isolated under President Buhari's uh, leadership. Uh, yeah, he's right. He's right that a lot of them pretentiously, and the reason why is this, let me tell you, once the crisis comes to a particular community, if you're not united in opposing it, it stays. So when you, that's why you see the crisis persisted in the Northeast, the Northwest. Once it came to the South and you see this unity among the people in opposing it, it goes away. A lot of people are angry because they know- Has what, it gone away? Oh, well, it, it, once we've seen the governors acting this way, we have hope that they are there doing our work. Now, why has it failed in the North? Why has the Fulani bandits ravaged the Northwest? Why have the Boko Haram sustained ravaging of the Northeast? Because there are discordant voices. As he rightly says, those people who abuse the ECOWAS protocol and bring in the Fulani militia, as you had those who went to Sunday Buhu's house, we are speaking Bambara and French. How could you not include such people in our security network? It is also true, as Buhari has said and he has repeated, that those who come in to do these things, like Erufai have said, speak French, speak Bambara. If right now the current crop of leaders we've seen among the Fulani elite are not able to hold back these are people who come in, we cannot trust them. It's very dangerous. Let the power go elsewhere where somebody can say there is a crisis. Who are these Fulani elites? Can you well, break the, them down? The elites are those who come to television to speak to support the behaviors when Governor Autumn cries and screams. When the people in South Ankaduna cry and screams. When the people of Bachama in Newman cry and screams. When there is war in Gembu between the Fulani from Mali and the Kaka and the Pansa. When the TV are crying, you know, when the Yorubas form a motiku, why I'm telling you this is, if it is this widespread nationally, and nothing has happened, we will see some of the elite come here and defend it. Some even try going to Abbas Anjo to ask him to support a strategy to give those people land. And this is where I have been. Yes, it's okay for you to let them come inside. Sorry. But nobody's going to give you land, my dear. I have been saying this on this station for long when this thing started. The right thing for them to have done is to make sure they keep those people in their countries. Bringing them here now, look at how they want to get land in Kaduna, ethnic cleansing. Look at in Plateau, ethnic cleansing. It is moving down south. That's why the governors are together. None of them can be trusted to actually hold these people down. We believe the members of the Irredentist movement are far more powerful than the polite members of the Fulani elites. When you say that there is ethnic cleansing, you know, 
What people are removed from their land in Kaduna, there, there, there and is, then what, people where, are removed from their, where, from their ancestral where, lands they, in, in Rion, in Barakin Ladia, where, where, in Joy where, South, in Kaduna was, um, where Mr. Mr. Baba, in the Adara. Mr. Baba, man, <laughs> if I may, yes. you know, because some people will say that um, if the crisis that happened in the northeast of the country, where two million people are currently in IDP camps, over 35,000 people have lost their lives in that conflict, which is not of their own making. Um, that if such a thing had happened in any other region of this country, uh, that there would have been huge cries of a genocide. Yes. Uh, but the question is, that's not what is happening there. That is what is happening. Those people are coming to cry to the Southerners that the Fulanese are killing them and the Fulani elites are doing nothing. What the Fulani people? president is protecting the people of the Middle Belt. That's why you hear Governor Otto no, no, cry no, no, every no. day. I'm talking That's about, why you hear I'm, people... I'm, I'm talking about the Boko Haram crisis. Exactly. The Boko Haram crisis is not being painted as a Fulani or any other Because when of it crisis. started at the beginning, we didn't understand it. But now that we've seen that those who control the Fulani bandit militia, Fulani herdsmen militia, are also the people who control the Boko Haram militia. So we now understand the cascade of violence across the country actually comes from President Buhari's table. Why? If you allow the soldiers, they will stop it. But because they swear their oath to Buhari, they will not dare touch They swear their oath to the president. Yes, instead of the constitution. Not, not Buhari. I mean, they dare to dare they, to the president. Yes. To President they, Buhari. It, it's very important that that is the well, president. Well, President Buhari so has refused to be president just, of Nigeria. Just a moment, so that we, we, don't miss, we don't misinform Nigerians. It, it is true that it is the president who signs uh, their commission letters. And it is to the president, I mean, that they owe allegiance because he is the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Uh, and I think that it's very important that we differentiate the person from the office of the president. Very good. It's very, the president it's important. right now is President Muhammad Buhari. So the service chiefs swear oath to him instead of swearing to the constitution. And that's why you see... What does all this have to do with the issue of rotation of presidency? Can no, no, I no. Ask rotation this of presidency Can is I what is written question? in the constitution of the parties. Listen. No, one party. Be careful. Let's be specific. Okay, this is a you're national saying TV. The, the, the this PDP. is national speak about facts. PDP has a provision that was disputed a number of times that it should rotate presidency. I thought the issue here is should the presidency go to the south because 17 southern governors have come to say bring the presidency here. And it's causing uh, an exciting national discussion. Mm -hmm. What is all this talk about uh, uh, for what the Fulani did or didn't do? I'm hearing this, this tissue of fiction for the first time. I, I, I don't know what the Fulani uh, leadership is. The bottom line is, I think we're running away from the issue. We're talking about a major initiative by 17 North Southern governors to get the presidency to move to the north, you to know, the south. Mr. Baba, and, you know, some people will say that, indeed, it would have been okay for us to say this, uh, that what he has said, you know, could totally be dismissed. Who has said? Um, what Mr. Ononuju has said mm. uh, could totally be dismissed. But the circumstances, the, the environment in which we operate, mm. um, the environment in which this has been said mm. cannot be dismissed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as we pointed out, Again, and, and I'm at pains to point it out again, the secessionist movements, yeah. which have started and gained undue momentum, it would seem, mm -hmm. are some of the pointers to how uh, the South, some people in the South, are feeling. Because, I mean, as, as I think I, I heard the Commissioner of Police in uh, Lagos say that if there's no general, um, if there are no people behind a general, the general is in front and he has no followership. He'll be no one. It, exactly, he'll be no one. Mm. But these people, it will seem, are gaining momentum. They have a following. Who's... And their followership seems to be growing. In recent times, when Sunday Boho was arrested, mm. I do not know if you saw the cadre, the caliber of people who spoke up uh, against the, the arrest, uh, mm. at least the man in which it was done, mm -hmm. these are people who ordinarily you would, you would think would condemn his activities in the very first instance, uh, but they're people who have spoken up for him. Uh, doesn't it raise huge questions in your mind it as does. to it how, does. how deep the divisions are running there are divisions. and how isolated people are beginning to feel? There are divisions that we, 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 we feel are dangerous for the country. They, they represent existential threats to the future of this country. We believe that there are reasons why a lot of the... Um, 
uh, at the escalation of irredentistal. We, we recognize that. The issue here, however, here is, doesn't that suggest that what we all to do as a nation is to work to bring an end to the presidency of President Buhari in 2023 and put a leadership that will rebuild this country, rebuild trust between the communities? But there are people who have felt that as a, as a, as a result of his presidency, that the mm. North has benefited unduly. There are people who feel that way. Uh, and there are people, I mean, look at what is happening with the PIB. I would and ask how, them, and how would this has been people, reduced I would to... ask those people to show me the evidence. They haven't been to the North. They sit in Abuja or maybe uh, they sit in Lagos and they make all these assumptions about Fulani, Redentis, and well. How can the North, how could the North have benefited under the presidency? Yesterday, from my state, in a school, 100 and something children were, were kidnapped. Virtually every single day, um, families are kidnapped. Children can't go to school. This is not just the North. Virtually, this is virtually the whole North. How, you, you do know that politics. You do know that politics of ethnicity has dogged this country for as long I as we can remember. I understand the politics of ethnicity. Yes. The solution to an administration that you say, and I agree to you up to a certain extent, we have we mismanaged diversity. We have not created a nation uh, that we should look at a national problem rather than a sectional problem. And I think we should deal with that. But for me, the solution really is that we should put in a leadership that will do exactly the opposite of what President Buhari is doing. Inclusiveness is important. An assertive, a very strong administration against all forms of threats, including irredentist threats, should be dealt with. Um, uh, grievances of communities must be addressed. You must put a government that listens, a yeah. government that is representative, a government that recognizes threats and deals with them and doesn't just ignore them and allow them to grow. That's really what it is. But to blame the North for the failure of President Buhari is unacceptable. We would not do that. We would not even accept the argument that in any way the North has benefited under President Buhari. And therefore, to What ask, about the Northern elites? Have they benefited under President Buhari? Where is the Northern elite? Would, would you Northern agree elite that are about? the President, I mean, that Can the you Northern give me a elite. definition of your. Do work? you agree that we have elites? We do have elites. Do they Are you talking about the people in the government of President Buhari, the ministers? Indeed. They are not elite. They will be included. Yes, but th th those are not elite. They would be, these are people who work with President Buhari. If you define the northern elite entirely. I, in I that just sense, said that they will be included. I did not yes, say that they yes, will yes, constitute yes, yes. the bulk. I mean, there'll be people well, who, I would say who, who, will, who will receive patronage as a result of him being, and we know that we run uh, a system based on you rent and patronage. You can count those people, it's possible. Yes. It's possible. You can count those people on your fingertips, the people who run the government and therefore um, get some benefit. I don't know who they are. I would define myself and my organization as part of the Northern elite. And we've been in the vanguard of, raise, of uh, keeping this administration um, on its toes. We have demanded farmer action against crime. We've demanded farmer action against irredentism. We've de we have improved, we have demanded improvements in administration. We have paid a huge price in the North for, for the, under the Buhari presidency. I have said this a number of, so many times. People turn around and say, okay, the North, um, there, there, is a, there is a grand scheme under the full idea, and therefore you guys are So let me quickly ask Mr. Donoju, do you agree that the Northern Elders Forum, uh, and I'm very specific about this, the Northern Elders Forum has earned the right to say, look, we don't know what it is that this is about. We should make this about yeah, Because wrong. if there's anybody that has spoken up against this presidency, uh, we have as Northern Elders Forum. Do you agree with them? Yes. The Northern Elders Forum has every right to organize. But what I will remind you of, it's uh, we in the South see the Northern Elders Forum as another group, uh, you know, uh, who just speak. What the governor said carry weight. What the governor said we will implement. It's real. It's not going to come. Look at the PIB bill. Mm. Just before we get to the PIB, I understand my colleagues have questions uh, from Lagos. Gentlemen. Well, uh, let, me, let me begin um, uh, by asking uh, Mr. Onoju just one question. It would seem from all the conversation we have, and I think Malkwe referenced it earlier, and that is the fact that the us and them thing is quite strong. The question of ethnicity, you know, the north against the south and all of that. Don't you think that's 
you know, really reducing the issues, as opposed to us coming together and speaking Nigeria, and not just Northern Nigeria or Southern Nigeria. How do you see us mending fences? Uh, well, I thank you for that question. Uh, what uh, President Buhari and the Fulani elites, who are members of the Redentist movement, have done is simply to force us to abandon what you're suggesting for us coming together as people of one country. Because the way they have gone on, look at the cleansings, look at the quest for land. It divides us. Look at the nepotism, the way it was weaponized to give only one section of the family in every house where a father has 10 children and he starts treating only two of those children in an exceptionally nice way and others are ignored. You know, naturally, the remaining eight will band together against those two who are the metaphors for their suffering. This is what's going on. So it's so, it is, we consciously, honestly do have a full and a problem. Let's not, de let's not deny it. If we don't solve that full and a problem, as you've heard, some people come from outside the country and the ones inside have only just breached the presidency and got the Buhari to allow them. If you see even in the PDP and the APC, there are these people of the Irredentist movement who encourage these foreigners who come in and kill, foreigners who now must cleanse to take land, look at people living in IDP campus, and foreigners are living in their villages. So the only way to solve it is to go back to that cause of it. It is the ethnic championing of an ethnic agenda by President Buhari. Let us, what you're now seeing is the entire ethnicity. That's why you're seeing some groups called uh, uh, IPON, you know, Independent People of Nigeria, Indigenous People of Nigeria. The indigenous people have no value. The indigenous people have no right when compared to Fulanis from Mali, Central African Republic, and we now thought the only way to solve this issue is to find an indigenous person, probably from the south, since indigenous people in the north are crying and saying that they are being killed. That's why you're seeing the governor of Benue State supporting the southern governors. That's why Anandu, you even see those clearly, from Bruno supporting the southern governors. Well, Mr. Because Anandu, clearly what's going this... on in the north is totally right. unacceptable. You know, clearly this topic about, you know, zoning presidency to the South has behind it or inside of it a lot of subtopics. And, and it's understandable because all these things uh, culminate to whatever decision you see across the region. But let me take this back to uh, Mr. Baba Ahmed and just uh, get his response to uh, the statement that was made in the build-up to the 2015 elections by uh, Professor Ango Abdullah. And he was speaking for the Northern Elders Forum. And he said specifically that this forum, re re referring to the NEF, is agitating for a candidate from the North. Now, I'm reading this word for word, and no party has fulfilled such condition except the APC. And he went on to say, in view of this, Northern Elders Forum will not support the PDP in the forthcoming elections, basically saying, we are going for a candidate from the North. You referenced that it should be done based on democracy, since we operate a democracy. So the question is, what has changed between then and now? And then you thought it was good to zone the presidency to the North, and you said you were going to support a, uh, a candidate from the North, but now you seem not to want that kind of arrangement. What changed? Um, I, I think you need to put a date to that statement. You're referring to the period um, during the scam issues around whether President Jonathan should run, continue to run or not. Am I correct? 15 elections, I because did. Because you see this issue about Northern Presidency and Southern Presidency has a long, long history. The bottom line is that the, the one party, one, identified a rotation of presidency as a priority and put it in its constitution. The same party has abused this provision so often and in such, such, such a way that even its own politicians don't have any, don't have any respect for it. Now, so now you have, you have a case being made by 17 governors from the southern part of the country um, it, the case has been made earlier on by social cultural groups, Afeniferi, Pandev, Ohanizi, other people have said, bring it to the south. 
we, the North has no problem with anybody making a case for the presidency going to the South. We've said this over and over again. I don't know why, why it's difficult for some people to do that. What we say is find a good way to convince every Northerner and, and every Nigerian, unless you consider Northerners' votes expendable, in which case you just simply say, Northerners line up. Uh, you produce a president, uh, President Buhari, who hasn't done well. Um, uh, we have issues that uh, uh, with northern leadership, and therefore you must bring the leadership to the south this time, and then all problems will be solved. Now that's not that's that's, that's the kind of fiction that is that uh, is strange. Um, other parties will not feel a, a, a southerner. So what happens? What, if, if a party feels a northerner, another party feels a southerner, northern voters exercise their rights the same way the southern voters will exercise their right. They vote, some people vote for a northerner, some people for, vote for a southerner. What happens if a northern president wins the election and emerges president? What happens? Does, do we have a situation where people say, no, 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 it's not acceptable? This is a fundamentally a democratic process. So what the point I'm making is simple. Politicians who are interested in, in, in getting a southern presidency should do the hard work of convincing Nigerians. Don't just sit there and throw demands and ultimatums and even threats of, uh, about what would happen if we don't have a southern presidency. Don't you think that it will make the work of the northern president even more difficult? Um, assuming that could happen, I mean, first and foremost, people will say that the, the way the constitution is structured and the way it demands that a president emerge, at least two-thirds, he must get 25% vote mm -hmm. in at least two-thirds of the country. Uh, if that is the situation, it means that it's going to be almost impossible for any president to emerge on either side of the north or the south without the support of one or the other. It's a good thing. It, which is a good thing. However, if that eventually happens and a northern president is thrown up, don't you think that it further risks isolating the South or people in the South um, and gives them a, a bigger job in terms of having to unite the country. You don't think so? Uh, I think that uh, it's only if we read uh, the, the kind of language that comes from my brother here that every northern northerner is likely just simply to deepen uh, to borrow his words, Fulani, irredentism, Fulani this, Fulani that. This is, this is not... Uh, what the North wants and what Nigerians want is a leader that will be a Nigerian leader, not an ethnic leader, not a regional leader, a, an, a, an honest, hardworking, visionary Nigerian who can actually heal this country. That's what Where he of... comes from yes. is secondary. Now, if he's, if, if he's a southerner and he gets the votes of both the North and the South, we would live very happily and support him. Dr. We've done this. Let me say this. Dr. We've, Ahmed, you know we why have I done smile. this before. L let People me... tend to think that the North is, doesn't think. We've supported, we, we created the, the, we supported Abiola to emerge to come close to a president. We voted for President uh, Obasanjo twice. We voted for Jonathan against a Northern candidate, okay? So it's not strange for Northerners to vote for non-Northerners. Uh, you you, and you, even you now, voted for Jonathan against a Northern candidate in what year? In 2011? Jonathan won his election in 2011. 2011, yes. Remember? And you, you saw just how big a controversy. Yes. First and foremost, you, you, when I asked you which North you speak for, you say you speak for all of the North. Yes. And uh, there'll be huge questions on that. because. Uh, uh, People will ask how the Northern Elders Forum was able to get the mandate of the whole of the North to be able to speak for them. There is a presumption. Nobody there. gives groups mandates. Th that's one. And then there, and the and then there doesn't have the mandate there, of there, every there is a, person. There's another group, I mean, in the North, the Arawa Consultative Forum, which yes. is another very prominent group. Yes. We haven't heard them speak yet. We've had the Arawa Youth Forum speak. They have had their own voices mm -hmm. um, heard. But there will be huge questions as to whether or not this will be carried. Uh, by groups in the north, and there are many groups in the north. Sure. So, so. But we know we know people listen to us. That's good enough for us. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you. People listen that to I everybody. Don't, yeah, but I'm I'm not going to. Tell <laughs> a green you. is another kettle of fish. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, so, so when you say that if, when, where a president a president that can unite the country is very important, and where he comes from is secondary, some people will say no. That it's the other way around. That a lot of people will be looking to where, uh, you know support is going to be coming from mm -hmm. for the next president. Mm -hmm. There will be huge questions as to, 
you know, whether or not the North thinks that unity Excellent. and carrying people along Excellent. is is important enough. Uh, I, I mean, unity of this country is more important. I don't want to say it's more important than competency, <laughs> but <laughs> those sentiments are strong enough that it will seem that no matter what you do, doesn't um, that that is that that is that reinforce the argument yes. that there must be a democratically elected person, transparently and sincerely and openly. He must be elected first and foremost. Nigerians must recognize that that person, wherever he comes from, was elected. No dispute about that. He was elected because Ni more Nigerians feel safe and secure and uncomfortable with him than anybody else, than, than any other candidate. And therefore, the elections must be, must be can Nigerians must be allowed to exercise their constitutional rights to elect a president. If we were to put side by side, um Unity and security, because they're two different things. Unity and security. No, they're not. Uh, Lack of unity creates no, problems for security. It this does. This is what we're dealing so with. So one affects the other, but I'm trying to say that if we were to prioritize, mm. because security is about how safe I feel. Sure. Unity is whether or not I feel a part of the country. I could be safe, sure. but I, I might not feel a part of this country. Sure. So if we were to prioritize unity or security, which do you think takes precedence? I would say unite the country, but you don't just unite the country in an abstract terms. You must give every Nigerian a sense of belonging. And the way you do that is you run a government that allow, that is inclusive, that uh, pays attention to the peculiarities of sections, uh, that, is, uh, that brings in all Nigerians into the process of governance and that is available to all, all groups. That's yeah. how you do that. So you reinforce unity and you give security. All this irredentism you're saying is substantially because people feel sub substantially marginalized. They feel they are not part of this administration. They haven't been part of this administration and therefore they want out. The, the way to do this is to fix the, the, the leadership of the country. This time, elect somebody who would not behave like President Buhari does his, runs his administration. Mm. That so, will substantially address both the security issues and the, um, the, the national unity issues. In, in, in conclusion, and I want to take a closing comment, right? so perhaps I should take yours first. Um, how do you see this conversation being resolved? Uh, Mr. Babarin has said that the governors belong to, um, um, you know, I don't want to see national groups, they do. different national groups um, that have th authority, you know, to do something about this. How do you see this conversation being resolved, especially now that we see that the, the southern governors don't belong to one political party? They all belong to different political parties. How do you think that they, that this um, on pass, because it looks like this is what it's going to be at the end of the day, how do you see it being resolved? It will be resolved through natural selection. Why do I say natural selection? Buhari and those who aid him in both the PDP and the APC have closed all avenues for discussion. You can hear what he's saying. If he walked to, Buhari, to bring Buhari in, and after eight years Buhari has ruled, he's telling me again, my brother is telling me we should allow him to also bring another of his brother in. How do I'm others not feel? You that. Come on. But that's I'm what you're saying. You Why not... then contest <laughs> what our people? You have taken your ATAs. You worked under Buhari. You came in with Buhari. And then, whether Buhari disappointed you later on or not, that's not my business. Our people are now saying it is our turn. Giving instruction to all our people. We gave these people ATAs. From now on, no matter the party you are in, in, no matter where you are talking about, make sure the thing returns there since they've taken their own eight years so that we'll be able to address this pertinent national security crisis. For a security crisis to be so difficult you that know? people are now united despite their parties, despite their ethnicities, tells you that they see a lot that they want to speak anyhow openly because if they do, Somebody from the so, top. So let, let me let me let me quickly say approach. this: that it means that you will elevate competence. I'm sorry, you would elevate where the person is from over competence. No, I elevate security. I must be alive first before you tell me. And what you we'll don't do. think that a northerner, if he comes in again, can give you 
the security which no, you no, desire. No, 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 today can be able to reset the fraud that Buhari have perpetrated. Just for being a northerner. No, 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 because they do not have, listen, and you they can They don't know that? No, 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 today has that capacity really? to face the Fulani Redentist movement. Take yeah. this from me. Well, uh, okay. That's why you see we the whole have to of go the now. country Mr. Mr. Ananujo, we have to go now. I have to quickly take your own 30 seconds closing comments. How do you think this crisis, this impasse, pass is going to be I resolved? I think it will be resolved, you know. Mm -hmm. I honestly think it will be resolved. I think the governors and uh, key people in the southern part of the country recognize the fact that if there is going to be a future in this country, mm -hmm. it's not going to be resolved in the way it is being done. Um, with threats and with talk like uh, from my brother here, yeah. That's not the way it's going to be. You know. Politicians need to get together and decide who, what is the best way forward. It's, all these problems you see is because they're not doing their jobs properly. Mm. These, the governors are politicians too. In their parties, the governors are extremely powerful people. When you see them doing this kind of thing, it's a lazy and very dangerous way of, of playing politics. It should stop. Mm. They need to work as politicians and have the idea that this country must survive, particularly the nature of leadership that emerges in 2023 is central to whether Nigeria survives or not. And it must not be regionalized, it must not be ethnicized, and it must not be made a subject of further division. If mm. you confine, if you cage a part of the Dr. country to we, create, we, I understand, if you cage we, a part of the country so that another part of the country uh, go governs the country because everybody, everybody else is condemned. That is not a good foundation for a future. It's a fine place to leave it. We have to thank you both for coming on Sunrise Daily. Hakim Baba Ahmed is the Director of Publicity and Advocacy at Northern Elders Forum. And Mr. Kach Anonujo is an economist. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Me.